this technology itself is a perfect way to give people back privacy that has been taken from them. About a year ago, a new blockchain platform called Zencash was created, which is a currency and a platform that really prioritizes privacy. So I thought that sounded really interesting. I hadn't heard much about Zencash before, so I decided I would check in with the people from Zencash and find out what it is, what it does, and uh, why so many people are so in love with it. So I'm joined here by Rob Villione, who is the lead and the co-founder of Zencash. Thank you so much for joining me, Rob. Thank you for having me, Naomi. I'm really happy to be here. So it is coming up to your one year anniversary of the creation of Zencash. Congratulations. Uh, but tell me, what is it? We wanted to use this technology, this you know, blockchain technology, to create a whole end-to-end -end privacy ecosystem. Um, so we started with a privacy-oriented cryptocurrency and cash. Uh, and now we just announced a recent pivot into building out a whole secure platform uh, with a whole bunch of kind of distributed applications on top of the platform that are focused towards, you know, uh, censorship resistance and giving people uh, what we think is an equal, equal say and equal voice and equal opportunity out in the world. Why do you think that privacy is important right now in particular? With so many really cool technologies out there, we're realizing that uh, we actually have a lot less privacy in a world where we should be having a lot more privacy. We realize, well, this technology itself is a perfect way to give people back privacy that has been taken from them. What is Zencash? It is the world's most decentralized and anonymous blockchain platform for money, media, and messaging. With its over 6,000 end-to-end encrypted secure node network worldwide, Zencash ensures that the owner's digital assets, communications, and publications remain fully secure and anonymous from the unwanted third parties. You created Zencash by forking Zcash. So tell me, mm. why, why did you create Zencash? What makes your platform better than Zcash? I would say different. Uh, so we have a different completely different mandate uh, stuff that we're doing with it. The reason that we forked from Zcash was uh, we wanted to grab the zero knowledge cryptography library that they, they actually commercialized. Um, so that was the first part. And that was actually what we did by creating the currency uh, Zencash. Um, but then we started to build out a whole completely different system. Uh, one with secure nodes, which are kind of similar to master nodes. Um, you know, and a whole bunch of distributed applications on top of it, and, and even different cryptography layers that we put into the protocol. You were the first platform to implement TLS. Can you explain what is TLS and why is that valuable? Yeah, so TLS, it, uh, Transport Layer Security, it's basically, um, so it's like when you go to a website and you go, you could normally go with HTTP to your website, but TLS is like HTTPS where you're actually doing the the end-to-end -end encryption. We wanted to actually have um, transactions occur on a point-to-point -point encrypted tunnel. Right. So we, we, yeah, so we, we use zero-knowledge cryptography for transactions, which is highly secure to begin with. So a lot of people were questioning, why do we even need TLS? Um, you know, and it really has a, a marginal improvement on security, but that's right now. But our vision is to have a fully end-to-end -end encrypted network and then start doing some other stuff on top of that network. So for us, it was probably more important than for, say, Zcash. From the industry's leading ZK Snarks protocol to TLS integration and domain fronting, Zencash is applying the best privacy technologies to its blockchain to ensure full privacy, anonymity, and safety of its users. Every little bit of uh, security helps though, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly my, my I, I agree with you completely. Explain to me the secure node network and how it differs from, say, a master node network. We want to have a massively distributed and censorship resistant network, right? So we know that we want to have as many nodes as possible or copies of our software running. So a master node is basically a copy of software, like a full node, that has a big staking requirement. So Dash, for instance, has a 1,000 Dash staking requirement which is just like astronomical in, in economic terms. Right. What we want to do is significantly lower that entry barrier where we, we set it to 42 Zen, like the answer to the universe, right? From Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, okay. uh, so yeah, <laughs> you know, we've got a bunch of, a bunch of nerds in the, on the project. Um, but, no, on a blockchain project? <laughs> right, in a cryptocurrency <laughs> project. 
<laughs> but so we wanted to have a really low entry barrier because we want a lot of people around the world to be able to participate and we want a lot of nodes. We actually have more nodes now than Bitcoin um, and we'll probably have very soon more nodes than Ethereum. So I think in, in the next month or so, we're going to have the most nodes of any cryptocurrency network in the world. What Satoshi did really well was he got, he got the incentives right for miners. Um, but then there's a whole bunch of other stakeholders that don't really get direct compensation. So what we did was we tweaked the, the protocol a bit to actually pay people to run a secure node. Um, it, yeah, so the combination of a low entry point and then um, you know, payment, I think, was kind of our, our magic recipe. And we just announced a big increase in payment. So that's why I'm pretty confident we're going to jump past uh, Ethereum even. Another big announcement is Ledger has just started accepting Zencash yes. on there. So that's pretty cool. It's really important, though, for people who are, are serious investors. You know, uh, not having a hardware, a hardware device is, is kind of like a, um, a showstopper for a lot of people. How does the privacy element of Zencash differ from the privacy of, say, Monero? Any transaction that's broadcast, you have no idea um, who is sending what to whom or you know, how much. All you can see on the blockchain is that a valid transaction occurred. And, and by valid, it means that there's no double spending. Um, but there's no details of that transaction at all. With Bitcoin, some of the earliest ways to try to obfuscate transactions was basically to just mix them around with these tumblers. And they were done off chain. Like people would actually literally put together um, some software where you would grab UTXOs from transactions and mix them together um, and try to hide who has what. What Monero uses is a protocol called CryptoNote, which is essentially like a big internal mixing engine. Um, so it really is fundamentally just mixing transactions, whereas ours is completely dissociating transactions. Do you think that that's increasingly important as we have more and more regulation in the industry and more and more censorship? Absolutely. No, it, it's, it's absolutely critical. And for me, being a big libertarian, this was actually, uh, I think privacy is a human right. I think this is really important. Um, and there's a lot of people around the world who are completely denied their, their basic right to privacy. Now, I'll tell you the dark side of this, though. And the dark side is what the regulators always kind of try to scare us with of, hey, there's going to be drug cartels using Zen. Or you know, what kind of sucks is the dictator of Venezuela accepts Zen for the Petro now. And, and that's something that, <laughs> that's not yeah. something you want to claim. Like, no, exactly. You know, that was exactly the opposite of what we wanted. Oh. And, you know, and I don't know if this was kind of like his big, you know, uh, you know middle finger to us because <laughs> we were writing articles against the patch or <laughs> commenting against it. We have to write, ride this fine line with regulators because we want to mainstream our technology, but we have to make sure that the regulators don't try to completely shut us down and say, um, hey, Zen can't trade on exchanges because it's a privacy coin. We're not trying to create, you know, um, or help out people who are harming others. Right. All right. So it's really important to us to get this message out. Now, how resilient would Zen Cash be to censorship from government? So if they did try to shut it down, I mean, there's always the option of going on decentralized exchanges, for example. Right. So we're building everything to be as, de as censorship resistant as possible. Yeah. I, I, and I mean everything. So, and this also comes down to our resources. So every block that's mined, a little bit of Zen goes to a community fund. Uh, and what we're doing is we're actually building a voting system into our software protocol so that the community could actually vote directly on how the resources are used. We're really trying to build a decentralized autonomous organization, a DAO, so that no matter what happens, it can keep running. That's cool. So when will that be yeah. implemented? So we actually have the, the prototype is done and it's under uh, load testing right now. So we're hoping by the end of Q4 of this year, we'll be able to implement it. Wow. Very cool. Sounds yeah. exciting. Now, there are a lot of aspects to Zencash. It's not just a currency. But Zencash is not just about the privacy. With its recent and first-of-its-kind R&D partnership with IOHK, the world's leading blockchain research firm, Zencash is solving the biggest needs in blockchain industry today, such as exponentially increasing scalability via applying directed acyclic graph or DAG-based specter solution and implementing protocol-level treasury and voting system to create the first digital model of true democracy. We started as a currency, uh, but now we're building this governance system into it, which I think is really important. This voting system actually came from some game theory research 
uh, to try to figure out how do we improve voting systems from what we have, say, in like politics. We're introducing a new node class called Supernodes, and the Supernodes will run side chains. Uh, and the side chains will actually have all of our smart contracting logic that we can build DApps on top of. That's so rather cool. than, yeah, because security is so important to us, we don't, we don't want to build all the smart contracting logic into the main chain. Because you can see with Ethereum, for instance, if you build a full Turing complete scripting language into your protocol, now all of a sudden you have a lot of ways to attack the protocol and a lot of ways to make mistakes. So we want to actually partition that and, and have the main chain be as secure as possible and now do all that kind of you know, higher risk logic on the side chains. So then the, the D apps that we're building, like the, the secure chat, we call it Zen Chat, which we're actually leveraging the ZK snarks from our main chain. Um, where we built the chat protocol so that now actually I would say this is probably the most secure chat system in the world just based on the cryptography um, But it's, it's slow and clunky. It's not going to replace telegram or signal tomorrow um, But it was a placeholder and for people say like a journalist in a really repressive area of the world It can securely communicate with someone with like no way of, of even knowing that who communicated with him. If I wanted to send you an encrypted message right now, it was really secure telling you something super private between us. <laughs> um, how, yeah. what do I need to do? Do I download a client? Yeah, so we actually have a standalone client called Zen Chat, but actually what might be more convenient for you is we built it into our wallet. So into our full node wallet, there's a, a, a little messaging tab in there. You can go in there. And it basically, it, it leverages the ZK Snarks from, from the wallet itself. So it'll take you about, with a, a four gig RAM processor, it's gonna take you about 30 seconds to do a message. One of the issues I have with many of the encrypted chat services at the moment is you have to tie your telephone number to them. So yeah. everything sort of gets tied back to you. Um, how does Zencash avoid this issue? On our chat application, that's just not the case. You don't have to do. <laughs> you don't have to do that. I, I completely agree. I, I, you're not very anonymous if you have to link a phone number to it, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that kind of goes completely against the the point of it. Why did you decide to create Zencash? I mean, truly trying to liberate the world. I mean, what what I see us doing right here is probably the biggest it, uh, and so far most successful peaceful revolution in human history. Right. Um, going up, starting starting from Bitcoin, and I'm also involved in another project I always like to talk about called Seasteading. I love um, Seasteading. I yeah. like, I'm always I always like fingers crossed that that works out. As soon as they <laughs> got that working, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but between um, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency technology and blockchain tech and Seasteading, which is actually doing kind of experimental governance and and real world offshore, I, I think we really are doing a revolution here for liberty that. Um, you know, a lot of people probably don't understand what's going on right now, but Pandora's box is open uh, and in 10, 20 years, you know, people will look back and say, this is, well, duh, this, this was very obvious that this was going to happen. Uh, but right now it doesn't look very obvious, but I, I think that um, it, it's going to go exponential. How did you first get interested in Bitcoin, in blockchain, in encryption and privacy? What made you first get passionate about those subjects? Well, I think it's absurd by being a libertarian. I wanted to separate uh, money from state. I mean, during, during the last financial crisis and all these bailouts and QE and all that, it, it was just kind of sickening. Uh, so, yeah. And now I have to say, then I went back for my PhD in finance, and then we went into kind of deep depth on this whole QE stuff and what the Fed was doing. You guys haven't done an ICO or pre-mined anything there. So you've got some, uh, some good rap from the crypto community for that. Yeah, so for us, it was really important to try to be as kind of egalitarian as possible. And, you know, even for the, you know, team members, myself, and, you know, early founders and investors, everything that we have is because we bought it on the market. Uh, and that was really important. So we didn't do any kind of crowdfunding like an ICO, um, which I think has big problems in itself. Just a lot of economic agency issues with getting a lump sum of money up front. I'd rather right. not have that personally. I'd rather have a little bit of funding over time. And if we do well, we get more. And we do well, we do more. Keep right? the incentive I, I, structure going. So it's actually pretty fair um, and you know, pretty public and transparent about it. With no pre-mining, no ICOs, and fixed lifetime coin amount of $21 million, Zencash is engineered to last and constantly grow the value. Is it currently profitable to mine uh, Zencash for an individual? So there's a few different ways to calculate mining profitability. And the most recent one that I checked out, we were ranked number three in terms of 
uh, pr profitability for mining. You have to pay people. You have to make it worth their while to participate. All right, so mining is one way to make money, but there's also running a secure node, then run a super node. Uh, and then we're going to pay people to actually vote. And then if you're, if you're running a node, we're going to have ultimately like a, like a Google Play Store equivalent for Zen, where we'll have all these D apps in there. And a node operator will be able to say, well, I want to run this app on my node. Uh, and they get paid to do it. So there'll be a whole different like stream of revenue or revenue streams coming into the, our ecosystem. If people want to buy Zen Cash, where do they go? Okay, yeah. So we're listed on about half a dozen exchanges. Our biggest uh, volume exchange is on Bittrex right now. Uh, okay. And then if you're in Asia, there's OKEX and Upbit are pretty big. And actually, a, a really fun exchange listing, uh, which doesn't have a lot of volume yet, is on BitShares. We actually have three trading pairs on BitShares with the BTS, BitUSD, and BitCNY, which is the Chinese Yuan. Uh, so those are really fun, especially if you want to promote a decentralized world. Um, you know, get onto the decentralized exchanges, I think is really important. All of our wallets and all of the information on the project is on Zencash.com. Is Zencash a platform where third parties can be building apps on top of it the same way that uh, Ethereum set up their platform? So it's not just Ether, it's, it's a whole bunch, there's a whole swath of different projects. So th that's absolutely the vision. Uh, we're not there yet. So remember, security is our most important thing. We, we don't want to compromise that by rushing too much. Uh, so we're taking kind of a controlled and me uh, methodical approach to opening up the system. So right now it's our developers building the D apps, um, but we for sure will have an API, hopefully by the end of the year, once actually the side chaining solution is fully implemented. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, I would love to have a decentralized exchange running on our side chains, uh, something kind of similar to BitShares. I, I think BitShares is awesome. Uh, I, I want to do something like that within our own ecosystem. And then, if users are going to create their own tokens, then it would be great to be able to offer them on our own decentralized exchange. Hmm. I have some questions from some of my followers mm -hmm. on Twitter for you. Sure. One of them yeah. is Zencash isn't that well known at the moment. How do you guys plan to increase adoption? We have something actually, actually called Operation Radical Usability. I like uh, that, so, hey? Radical yeah, yeah. Usability. Totally. We're, we're taking usability to, to the extreme. So we have actually a whole whole suite of new, like super easy to use wallets and, and products being released in the next one to two months. Uh, we have a ton of different partnerships that are in the pipeline that will be announced in, in the next couple of months. Uh, so we're aggressively, uh, you know, approaching the kind of user market and make, trying to make our, our system much more useful to people. We don't want to just be a speculative vehicle. Our ethos is we're, we're trying to be the good guys in the industry and show that we really care about our users. Yeah. And I think it's starting to pay some pretty big dividends. Why should merchants and consumers use Zencash? Well, I don't think they should yet, actually. So, okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. The, re the reality is merchants have a supply chain denominated in their local currency. Um, and when they accept a currency that's not, from, you know, matched with their supply chain, they become currency traders. Mm -hmm. And a merchant's job is not to be a currency trader. So I think until we solve the volatility and the currency matching issue, which is actually easy to do, uh, we're, we're not going to see merchant adoption. So once we have the Zen dollar, we're, we're going to go on a massive push for merchant adoption. So I think that's the key. Is, and you have to make it super easy for merchants. So we're kind of laying the groundwork now. And then once we're ready, we're just going to go completely uh, you know, crazy on the merchant adoption. Well, yeah. it sounds like you guys have a lot of things going on at the moment. Uh, some very exciting things in the works coming out soon as well. And you're already doing amazingly with, uh, you know, having the almost the largest number of nodes out of any currency out there. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, it seems like the privacy function is just top of the line. So for people who are interested in privacy, they make this maybe a currency and a platform that you want to check out. Um, but thank you so much, Rob, for joining me. This has been fantastic and best of luck. Cool. Thank you so much, Naomi. Same to you. Basking in the glow of my LED television, hella pimping on these internets. I got a relevant mission since we got a problem with some rival borders. And we got a lot of laws that tell us that you're on a quest to slaughter. Every bit of an operation, they can't copy so